Hey there, welcome to Friendly Ties. This is a podcast about board games, although we are once again going to be talking about Ark Nova today. In particular, we have a new thing for us. It's a reveal stream for the Marine World's Ark Nova expansion, and we're going to learn about it at the same time you do. So, second podcast in a row about Ark Nova, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're like so, stuck on a theme. We're we going to rename ourselves <laughs> Friendly Ties Ark Nova. <laughs> so, a really cool opportunity has happened. And this is kind of an impromptu pretty spur of the moment episode that we're recording um, after we put the last episode out the designer of Ark Nova emailed me he liked the episode and he asked me if we wanted to get access to some exclusive cards for the big box marine worlds expansion coming out um, apparently all the stuff is going to go uh, live like in a, in a few weeks or the information but we we got an exclusive, and uh, he sent us 12 cards of different types that are all going to be in the expansion, and we've been really good. We have not cheated. We have not looked at them yet. We decided <laughs> it could be kind of fun to do like a reveal podcast where the three of us will, will learn about them at the same time you do, and we're going to talk about it. Um, so I do want to mention that this is going to be... Uh, a very Ark Nova E episode. We're not going to explain the rules to the base game, so hopefully you are familiar enough with that. Um, and also, uh, there is a video version of this that's going up on the Jongus Games uh, YouTube channel. You don't have to watch that, but there will be images of all of these cards there, which could help. We'll also try to explain it to uh, all of our audio only friends out there. So, yeah, uh, you ready to start looking at some cards? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, let's do it. So, the first thing that we're looking at is a player aid. So exciting. <laughs> but so it's exciting. Really, so exciting. I know, but it's important because this actually explains a bunch of new mechanics that are in uh, the expansion. So um, I lied before when I said I hadn't cheated. This is the only thing I did look at <laughs> before. Lies. But Nick, Nick and Anastasia haven't seen it yet. <laughs> we scolded him properly for it. You did. So you you did. <laughs> so the expansion is called Marine Worlds, and it's all about you know marine wildlife. And so one key new mechanic is reef dwellers so there's going to be a bunch of cards in this expansion that have this little coral reef icon somewhere on the card i strongly suspect we're going to see at least one card with this later on <laughs> with it um and every time you play those you reactivate the coral effects on all of the cards that you played that have coral effects so um mm -hmm. in, in this example right here it shows the red coral and it shows a three money so you get three money the first time you play it and that later on when you play another card that has that red coral icon you'll reactivate getting that three money again. So is this like petting zoo? I guess, kind of. Yeah, yeah uh, that's you know, kind of petting yeah. zoo-ish. Petting I agree zoo with that. ish Yeah, that's a good comparison. I'm trying to understand, though, Does do you guys know anything like, so like marine zoos? Are we adding marines? Is a coral reef in the zoo? Is that... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I haven't spoiled myself on these other cards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think the idea from BGG that I saw is that it's kind of like you're getting like an aquarium side, right? Like there's there's often like a a fish or shark thing at certain zoos and i think it's kind of like that yeah got I think it it's okay. because you know this is definitely showing my northern california but we did have a marine world i so know i, think I, I, I worked <laughs> at marine world for years yeah <gasps> no you did it i did oh my That's, god <laughs> <laughs> but uh so yeah coral reefs i guess you can add coral reefs and as you add more fish all the fish like each other and they, they give you stuff um apparently a couple of them don't have a bonus but most of them do um, so the next big mechanic, um, and this one's pretty interesting, I think, is a wave icon. And it says, whenever you replenish the uh, display and add a card with the wave icon on it, you discard the card in folder one. So essentially the oldest card on the display, and you replenish again. Mm. You keep doing that until you've, you've fully filled up the display. So in this expansion, it's my understanding there's a pile of new cards that goes into that enormous deck of cards. And I'm sure the number one thing that people are worried about is it's going to dilute the deck and make it even more random. And I think this is just there to help you cycle through so you get through that big deck quicker and hypothetically see something more like consistency. So moving on down our little player aid, there's there's a pretty simple one. It, it shows two uh, microscope icons and then a reputation icon. It just says you get a reputation icon for every two research icons in your zoo. So I guess that's just a way to squeeze more out of your um, research icons. I hmm. imagine we might be seeing one of those on a card that we're going to be revealing soon. Um, but the, the big one, I think, for especially for Anastasia, uh, 
in my opinion. <laughs> I just think she's going to like this. The last one down at the bottom is there are these six magnifying glasses, and within each one there's an animal type like predator, birds, uh, reptiles, and it says you reveal cards from the top of the deck until you find a card with the depicted icon. You take that card into your oh hand and God. place the other cards to the bottom of the deck. So Where are the birds? There's it's the like birds. you heard me. It's like yes. you heard me. <laughs> Where are my birds? <laughs> Can't find my birds. So, so that, I mean, that'll also help with the deck getting bigger. That'll add some consistency. You play a card and it says, you know, mm. find the next herbivore. And you just, you do. You just dig down until you find it. That, that seems like smart, I think, in order to try yeah. to navigate that deck. It'll be really interesting to see how often these cards come up, you know, to allow some of these abilities. But on first glance, I think that's really cool. I also think adding abilities to make research better. I don't know if you guys agree, but like, I feel like research icons can sometimes you play full games where you just like don't care about them like so i think it's really cool to see something where it's like it could tie into reputation make getting reputation a little bit easier i like that i like that as a concept yeah i glossed over that really quickly but but i agree that i've definitely played games where i just never even get a university i just don't care about that because i'm not drawing cards that care and i guess there's gonna be more cards that care yeah i like anything that looks at what you have and kind of imputes based on what you've already calculated that to me is the least interesting of these reveals oh for <laughs> sure for sure <laughs> i'm like no of course I, it I is do. so like reef dweller is interesting it makes me nervous because it's um it's like a mechanic where it's like if i draw all the reef dweller cards am i just gonna like completely cremate you guys this game because i like get to combo off all the reef dwellers mm-hmm. so i'd mm-hmm. be very very curious to see how that ends up playing out or like how you know prevalent those cards are um, obviously a part of that is that like wave mechanic, right? The replenishing the display and adding a card thing. I think this is cool because I know that we've gotten into some games where the board doesn't rotate in the way that we've wanted it to. Yeah, because it this... only does it in the coffee breaks and sometimes it can be a long time between coffee breaks. Yeah, this kind of like encourages that. One thing that I think will be an interesting side effect though of this yep. is that you I really can already don't... read your mind. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to have like being at like I'm, I'm curious if this is what you think it was anastasia but like being at the lowest tier or like second lowest tier of reputation is going to be even more painful because mm-hmm. the cards that you might be waiting for like oh if it, someone took this card it'll slot down to me you you can never count on anything being there um, yeah. 100%. At, at any time just a wave can just away. wash stuff down the river yeah totally and that lack of control is probably the thing from this and initial thing that I'm like most worried about. I think it will make it really interesting and, and do create more, more changeover, as you said, in the card row and, and, and take a little bit of pressure off of where you are in the reputation track and how, and do you have to flip cards and do you have to, like how you work with the card row? But I am, I, I do know there's a lot of games that I put a lot of thought into, okay, that card is going to be there when i need it based yeah, you like on catch the card factors. as it kind of slides by <laughs> yeah. before it goes all the way out yeah, yeah. one yep. cool side effect of that though is that i think it's going to up value snapping which i think is like a an aspect mm. of the game that's that's, that's generally a little bit on the weaker side in the base game mm. yeah mm. that is a good point because if you see something you want you can't you can't guarantee that when it comes to you like it won't just keep flushing down the toilet yeah. right <laughs> yeah you got to take it but i do think it's then going to also just further mean i I think i'm actually going to contradict what i just said i think you're gonna it's going to increase what i already think is almost a mandatory flip of cards like you're going to really need to have cards to make sure that you have a little bit more control over getting cards off of that interesting yeah yeah or or you just kind of pray off the top of the deck as usual right yeah (laughs) exactly yeah (laughs) dig deep there's also there's also a secret reveal here in the in the magnifying glasses we see our sixth animal type I know. I saw that too. Yeah, it looks like an octopus. Marine animals. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, do you want to see some animals? Yeah. All right. Let's let's jump it up. All right. Let's see. I'll read the first one, uh, and we could just take turns. So we have Mm. an American white spotted filefish, and all right. So we got a wave symbol. First off, that's our first wave symbol. It shows up right there. Uh, Five appeal. Um, It is. Oh, that's interesting. So it goes into a size one enclosure, but. That enclosure icon is red uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) instead of the normal. Costs 12 money. uh, And then it also looks like there's maybe going to be an aquarium type 
large enclosure. Like there's an icon that looks kind of like the aviary and the reptile house, but it looks kind of water based. I think I think that's like they're supposed to be like an embankment, and you're like your mm-hmm. marine animals have to be touched attached to that. I think that they, they did spoil that on BGG already. Oh, okay, that makes oh, a lot more they? sense. Okay, so it's good. kind of like, like that's it's not kind of like the, the mountains. Right? It's like the mountains and the like being next to mountains. Yeah. And being, this is like being got next it. to okay. Uh, we've also got a what looks like a marine life tag. We got a North America tag, and it shows a, a coral reef icon, and it shows the action that lets you set uh, any action card of your choice to the one spot. So I guess when you play this, you get to do that. And every time for the rest of the game, you play another Coral Reef icon, you can continue to cycle to the one spot. And that is, it's like Uh, one of the more understated but powerful actions in the game, I think. Clever, yeah. The fact that Nick already knows that that is called clever says everything. (laughs) (laughs) And when I play another Reef card, I get to do clever again, right? Yes. Yeah. So this card seems really good to me because yeah. there's already in the base game a bunch of monkeys that are like two size, cost 12, five appeal, which is what this card does, except for it's a one size slot. And this has clever, but the clever is repeatable if you play future reef cards. Yeah. So it doesn't seem like this card is like you know, amazing out of the gate, but it seems like it's just a, a smidge better than some of those monkeys that are, I think, very playable already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, I completely agree. Like, we're talking about this card. Uh, we're v- revealing it. It's fun. But I-, I will say we don't fully understand the restriction of that uh, enclosure. The icon is red instead That's of the normal true. brown. And, yeah, there's that icon next to it. Like, it shows water. Like, maybe it needs to be next to multiple water in a row. There might be another mechanic that we we don't fully understand that makes this one slightly harder to play than one of those monkeys you were talking about. I want to ask you guys, have you ever seen this fish in your life? <laughs> <laughs> no. I've never seen or heard of this before. I don't think I've heard of a file fish. I mean, it no. looks... I mean, I'm sure I saw it in Finding Nemo. Like, I mean, I'm sure it was there. <laughs> the source of all uh, aquatic of knowledge. Of all right? aquatic knowledge. Yeah. That's just what we're going to call it when we play this game in the future. We're going to be like Ark Nova Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> we need to take a trip to the aquarium. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's cool. All right. Which one of you wants to read the next one? Let's see how hard it is to pronounce. All right. Here it is. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have our next one here, the humphead wrasse, an endangered species. Oh, uh, interesting. This guy looks cool. Ooh, it's is, a huge he fish. Kinda, looks like a sunfish. I don't know if it's yeah. like a, the same thing, but it definitely looks like a sunfish. Um, and he's huge. He's expensive. 22 bucks to put this, this fella into play. And a three enclosure, again, in red. And then that embankment symbol... But this like little river embankment thing or whatever it is has a two in it, so clearly that that it's even larger, matters yeah. somehow, right? Maybe it's like the number of spaces that the enclosure has to like touch along yeah. the side of this board or something like that. Hmm. Um, also, looks like it has a requirement of having any university. You must have some science going on. Mm-hmm. This is an African an African fish that has a reef action called extra shift. And they have just the icon there, but they also explain it in text on the card. Return one of your association workers to your notepad. Oh, that, so that you is get to, Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> These are... <laughs> well, this makes sense. Right? The last card reactions. had no text on the bottom because we knew that icon from the base game. But this is a completely right. new action. And then it describes it down at the bottom, which makes sense. Yeah. Wow. That's wow, and then and then huge. and then also it's uh it's a conservation and six appeal, so yep. nine victory points if you want to count it that yeah. way. This Plus is a, the wave I mean, icon, yeah. Yeah, there's Ooh. a lot of work to play this card, right? You need to have the right enclosure in the right place with the university, but that, I mean, I've, you you heard our reaction, right? Like <laughs> yeah. the extra shift there is <laughs> huge, and, getting, and it is every time. Every you time you play then, another re- reef, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to, like, think out the ramifications of that. If you can bring your association workers back without having to break. Well, also, remember, uh, on the association board, in order to do the same action twice, you need to send two people the second time. Oh, but this one right. cheaper. would let you remove oh, it and then gosh. go right back over there without having to pay that extra penalty. 
That Y'all didn't wild. see it, but Nick just leaned way far back in his chair. Yeah, and realized and, and like, that. <laughs> he's like, "What?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. that's so good. That's so you you can. I, one of the things that I think is true about Arc Nova is that you have to ask yourself the question like, how quickly can I get an association worker into play? And with this ability, you mm. suddenly don't need to answer that question anymore. You can it's play expensive. a different game. Like this is not an early game yeah. card to play, but the earlier you play it, the more often you can use that action. And whew. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Very <laughs> cool is right. Very cool. <laughs> And you know it's interesting. I'm, this this card has like a direct comparison. I think in the base game too. There's um there's a turtle that's a three enclosure, twenty two cost, gives you one conservation point and six uh six appeal. It's basically the same. I think it's even an African um, turtle. No requirement for for building it, and its power is like sunbathing three or something like that. So mm-hmm. you know the 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 fundamental structure is similar. But this says, hey, I just want to I want you to jump through one extra hoop. But instead of the sunbathing action, you get this extra shift action that will make us fall out of our chairs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wasn't Literally. expecting new action types, but Ooh. I guess in retrospect, that makes total sense. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. All right, Anastasia. I'm ready. Can you pronounce Ooh. this? <laughs> yes. This is the common octopus. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Okay, so it's a three enclosure in that, again, that wreath. Red. Uh, it's red, yeah, so placed in this this wreath embankment that we don't fully understand. Um, but interestingly, it needs to be placed next to rocks. Yeah. Nine money, requires a research icon. We're in Europe now, and and then it's got camouflage. So let's see. If you play one other animal during this turn... You may ignore one of its conditions. Ooh. Ooh. So you just lean Ooh. into the animal's double play. Wow, that's that's really interesting to put on a nine money animal. Again, you know, we don't know yeah. exactly how difficult these things are to play, but one research icon worth five appeal again with the wave icon. So far we've seen wave icons on all of them. I'm I'm starting to wonder it might maybe be every card. Every card has a wave icon. Yeah. I think BGG did imply that when I okay. looked at the description. Got it. Okay. And then, yeah. So, so basically this is like, lets you ignore a condition. Like, I mean, there's obviously the map that lets you do that, but to be able to do that, I mean, to get a double play with like this and like bald eagle or some other mm-hmm. high value animal that doesn't require an animal slip, particularly early. I was exactly mid-game. thinking about that. Getting around the oh animal slip requirement would be enormous yeah. for some of those high power cards. Yeah, this is a really cool mid or late game card. You know, mid if you don't have the infrastructure that you need to like play that second effect or late game to just be like, oh, I want to play this amazing card, but I don't have the right, you know, prerequisite association or we just saw the previous one where we needed a university or whatever. Um, That's a really cool ability. I am a little sad for the research station map. This definitely steps on the coolness of that map's toes a little bit. (laughs) Yeah, a little bit. It really does. One card out of 300 or so, though, right? (laughs) I already don't like that map, so it's all good. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I I assume there are more camouflages. That's true. That is a good point. This is labeled as camouflage. There's probably other uh, octopus and whatnot in there as well. Yeah, potentially. And, I mean, I think when you think about it, like, when you look at this card, it doesn't repeat, right? So when you look at this one, this is not, just to be clear, the other two have had reefs, but this one did not. Right. No reef icon on this one. Yeah. This is just a one-time ability. Yeah. The other thing I'll, I'll say about this card is it's going to be the card that I know for sure in one game that I play, someone's going to go to play it and I'll be like, mm, you haven't met all the conditions because you need to have it next to rock and you need to have it next to the water and you need to have a uh, science. Like there's a yeah. lot of different little things it's going true. on It's true. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wish I'd been able to do my homework a little bit more to fully understand the water requirement up there, but this has a, a two next to it. So it, it's obviously consuming more of of whatever that requirement is plus the plus the mountains yeah the first line on bgg says sea animals that each have to be played in new special enclosures that must be built adjacent to water oh there we go Mm, mm, okay that makes a lot of sense and i will i will take the blame for this i did insist that we not look at these until we started (laughs) recording so some of this we could have maybe figured out before (laughs) we started recording or asked questions but I wanted to capture it all for you guys uh, in in the moment. Yeah, and also it makes sense why each one of these cards we've flipped so far 
it's been powerful. We're like, oh, that's good. Oh, that's really good. It's it's similar but better. Well, okay. Well, there's this extra roadblock. Yeah. There's um the other thing too is that the that magnifying glass thing we saw on the player aid board, that is apparently a fourth university that that lets you do that, lets you go fishing for a card. Oh, so oh. we might not see that on cards, but it's a university that you put down. That's yeah, cool. Got it. That's got cool. It. Yeah, that's true. It, it, it definitely could be on cards as well. I like that. It's neat for association to have a mechanism for drawing a card out of the deck. Yeah. Yeah, that is really how cool. Many, and a lot how many times to get to. do you need one more? Like it's it, it's it's not oh usually like oh I need three more birds. It's like one more. I just need one more, and then everything's going to come together. Mm-hmm. So exactly, <laughs> exactly. And having that and having access to that is just something you can get rather than something you have to find on a card. That's my biggest concern with this. You know. I think of Wingspan or other games, you know, where you have like a big deck of cards and then you put in the expansion. It's like, okay, well now there's just even more cards to what we've already said, but like Mm -hmm. then like how often they coming up. And so adding some game changing elements, that's, that's really cool. All right. Ready for the next uh, aquatic Marine world animal. Let's get yep. to it. Zoo plankton, tiny. <laughs> Everyone's favorite. <laughs> so this is this gets into a, a size one. I'm just going to call it a red enclosure, and it says zero with that kind of extra requirement. So it probably needs to be next to one of those things, but you don't actually put a cube down or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. Would be my assumption. It's cheap, four bucks. Uh, it is a has a marine tag, and that's it. And then sea <laughs> animal magnet. It's everywhere. <laughs> Add all cards with the sea animal icon from the display into your hand. One appeal. <laughs> <laughs> so That's we a saw funny card. Yeah, we saw magnet wow. in the original game, but it was specifically, I think, only sponsor magnet where you could just like right. grab yeah. all the sponsors. So this just lets you. I guess you throw zooplankton into your museum, and all the while animal the the water uh, animals just want to eat it up or something. <laughs> One appeal. Totally. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I mean, but think about how power. Just given like the three cards we've seen so far. If you wait and then drop this at the right moment, you are going to crush dreams. (laughs) Yeah, or if you have this in your opening hand and there's a bunch of just happens to be a bunch of cards that happen to come out. I mean, this this is a fun. I agree with you, Nick. This is a funny card. Like (laughs) it's like a funny card. It'd be really good in specific situations. I think. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I would play this card if it draws me one card. That seems a little on the low side because it only has the one appeal. I mean, if you have like an objective where you're trying to play out, yeah. you know, octopus marine animals, animals then yeah. sure, or marine animals, then sure. But I- ignoring that, I think if this picks up even two cards, it's done its job. Yeah. Totally. I $4. Totally. It's interesting. Is this the first card we've seen that has no consonant affiliation? Ever. Yeah. I don't think any. Yeah. yeah. It, it just yeah. occurred to me. I'm like, it looks so empty up there yeah so gonna you're never gonna get a it's discount everywhere it. it's always gonna be four yeah, bucks no. you're never gonna get a discount it's it really is leaning into like the um I, I feel like there's more right the we were just talking about the university that lets you draw cards from the deck and this is an animal that lets you draw cards from play i i think that they're i get the feeling like the actions are maybe getting a little bit more bled into each other ways to kind of um approach a game plan without having to be like, I'm running cards now. I'm running animals now, which is cool. Yeah. 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 Do I understand this correctly? That if you play, so going back to those cards we saw already, if you play a coral reef and they each have a different ability, do you, so you do the ability that they have plus the, every previous ability. That's my understanding that when you play a coral reef, it it fires off every single coral reef ability that you have in your, uh, in your mu- that is so arc. cool. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. I really like the thematic implication of what you just said, Anastasia, about this card. That like I'm more likely to take this if I already have other reef dwellers, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. I can kind of like build into that that ocean theme. So it's like yeah. the zooplankton is supporting all marine life, which like absolutely uh, everybody well wants done. to eat it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Cool. What's next? All right. He's so cute. Oh, my God. (laughs) Guys, the green sea turtle. Also endangered. So a a three size that looks like it could go on on the water or in your reptile enclosure. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, So it's two animal types, two different animal types, which is also the first time we've ever seen something like that. It's the ocean type and a reptile type um, from America, 17 bucks. 
six appeal and has a new ability called scuba dive scuba dive x reveal the x topmost cards of the deck choose one sponsor card and add it to your hand discard the other cards x is the number of <laughs> of ocean animals and reptiles in your zoo combined Whoa. so okay so this is like hunter right because we yeah. already have yeah. hunter it's it's actually the same as hunter except for instead of looking for animals it looks for sponsors mm -hmm. and the number it has counts essentially what your setup in the game is already yeah it, it already has two of that. us on there so if you just play this as your very first animal you're still drawing two cards and choosing one sponsor card so it's hopefully. already a, a little bit <laughs> hopefully, of it. well yeah, hopefully, hopefully uh, yes <laughs> <laughs> i will say six appeal feels a little light for 17 bucks it does yeah i agree with you although the number of icons i think that is definitely True. a factor to get that many different icons yeah it looks at a lot of your board state and obviously it's gonna be more likely to hit if you're doing those kinds of things and it's going to matter more if you're playing for instance a research heavy strategy and you really want to find those research sponsors and things like that yeah, yeah. and it almost makes sense if this is maybe a little less flashy maybe a little less powerful than some of the other ones that we've seen so far which we don't know i mean we're just doing gut reactions here that would kind of make sense considering you could just put this into a reptile house and then yeah so, so it's it's more flexible for for getting around that kind of restriction that the rest of the cards have had to deal with that sort of restriction to a certain degree or another. Well, and the fact that it is a reptile, I think also mm -hmm. is pulling in a little bit closer, bridging that line between the base game and the expansion in, in a way where I can see why maybe they're making it cost a little bit more, a little lower appeal. I think it, it might play in a little more with that. All right. Well, the next card, I'm cheating. I'm looking at the little, uh, little uh, preview. It's not an animal per se, but it's a new conservation. So it's going to be in that big deck, uh, and it's not watery at all, interestingly enough. Uh, so <laughs> it's Primate Management Plan. Uh, it's a conservation card that you play, and it requires two primate icons. So um, just somewhere in your, um, your zoo. And then there are, it looks like, three activatable options. The first one gets you two conservation and that clever mechanic where you can move any one card to the first spot on your board. The second option gets you two conservation and then one reputation for every two science uh, microscope symbols that you have already. So conditionally terrible or ludicrous. <laughs> and then the third option, here we go. It's two conservation and then you have a, a magnifying glass with the, the primate icon. So you get two conservation and then you can dig to find another primate. And then you always do a clever action. It, it, like no matter what option you choose, you also get to choose a card and put it into the one spot. So that first option you could do two clever actions back to back while also conserving, which is pretty cool, especially if you just associated and you want to do another association quickly, um, particularly trying to get squeeze in another spot, um, uh, conservation project. You know, you, you choose that first option and <laughs> right away you can slide things around. I, I think anyway, I think that's how that works. I'm really fascinated by the amount of clever actions if you will that have come out already yeah. even just the cards we've seen because i do think that it still happens in in a fair amount of games that you get into a board state we talked about this in the last episode where you just kind of get stuck and then you have to drop a card for an x token and maybe that x token is valuable but just to kind of reset things or something gets kind of stuck there's also plenty of games where like the clever action is useless like i don't want any of my cards to move um obviously because i've just played them in perfect order um <laughs> but I, I do think it's really interesting seeing that action come up more and more within these cards. Yeah. If there are indeed, you know, it might be just be the cards that they sent us, right? The ones that are like, oh, look at these. And uh, yeah. But if there are indeed more clever icons in the game, and I, I like that notice, it could be representative of the fact that different cards are allowing you different like tracks right like the zooplankton allows you to draw cards in a way that you couldn't draw cards before so maybe i'm more likely to use my clever on my cards action because i've already got new cards thanks to these other kind of vehicles that i'm using throughout the game right. so it could be that the addition of things in the expansion sort of demanded some more control over your action row yeah um, this is a this is a really interesting card. I mean, the design is very, I think, clean comparatively to the 
uh, the cards that you get from the base game. I'm forgetting what they're called, but like the bird plan or whatever, where it's like have a bird and an appropriate conservation. Oh, the uh, partnership zoo. Yeah, yeah. Partnership. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So those had, I think, a pretty clear hierarchy in terms of like if you're the first one to play it, you get your two points and your two reputation, and that's better than the other options. This doesn't have that. This yeah, has pick yeah. one of these three options, and you know you're going to choose the one that's best for you. But um, I might be going like right after you know John when you played it, and then I say, oh, you know, you don't have any research icons, so you're not going to take that one. Um, but then I've got six research icons, so I'm just going to I'm going to cash in on this, mm-hmm. um, and that leads to uh, that the asymmetry of that reward even like do you want to draw another primate right now is is asymmetric in terms of like how it's going to benefit different players that's that's a unique touch on this that i think uh will create a little bit more paying attention to your opponents which is interesting yeah yeah 100 percent agreed yep and and just the fact that there are you know, unique actions on here that it's not just about conservation points and reputation, that it is abilities to change your action cards, abilities to dig in the deck and, and something that takes a look at your board state encourages research icons. Like I like this evolution of the conservation cards. All right. Next up. (laughs) Horse whisper. (laughs) Sorry. I'm laughing because there's this picture of a horse and then a man kissing that horse and the horse does not look too pleased. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> oh man. Is this mine to read? I think or it's Anastasia. It Anastasia? Yeah, John great. skipped me last time. <gasps> um, I know. I'm noting it for the, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Horse whisper. Oh, I'm already super intrigued by this. Okay, so the Horse Whisper is a sponsor card. So we have a new sponsor card. Mm-hmm. Interestingly, a petting zoo sponsor card. Is this the first? I think this is the first sponsor card related to petting zoos. There's there's no card except for the petting zoo animals petting that I've ever seen before. Yeah, to yeah, petting but this zoo. has okay. that icon. It has that icon. Yeah. So not only does it give you a petting zoo icon, it's going to give you two money... Anytime a petting zoo animal is played, a petting zoo animal icon is played into any zoo, you're going to gain two money. Ooh, uh-huh. I like that a lot. Uh, but there are some restrictions. So it is a, th- a three level sponsor. So not too hard to play, but you do need to have six reputation in order to play it. So this is definitely not Modern amount. Yeah. an early game card. Yeah. You're not going to put this down and then wait for all of your opponents to cash in all their petting zoos and you're going to get rich off of it. And then let's see, it has an immediate effect, which is search the discard pile for one petting zoo animal and take it into hand. That's cool. Intriguing. It's it's a targeted scavenger, right? Normally in the the base game, there was that scavenger effect where you could draw random cards in the discard and then keep one. And this one lets you find that petting zoo that somebody discarded because they're not going into petting zoos. And that'd be amazing because the petting zoo cards pay out appeal based off of the number of that icon. And this also adds that icon so it's does it's, this a, it's icon like a s- then pay out as well does this mean that petting zoos can now go up to 12 i think so plus the money from this i mean this feels like it makes petting zoos super powerful i already thought petting zoos were really powerful yeah but again the earlier totally you are. play it, the better right if you play three petting zoo animals and then play this then it's dead and it, and it does have that six reputation requirement so that that that's a decent amount of work in the early game to get there so the the highest upside this card can have assuming that no other players play any petting zoo animals because this does pay you for every player that does yeah. that is that <laughs> if you've played no petting zoo animals and you put horse or spur into play and you get a pet a card out of the discard pile and then you manage to play three petting zoo animals afterwards you'll get six nine and twelve whereas you would normally get three six and nine So you could say that this card itself generated nine additional appeal, six additional dollars, and drew you one of those petting animal cards, which is nutters for a sponsor <laughs> card. <laughs> yeah. But but again, that was the ideal scenario that. where you That's get, the ideal you scenario. Before you play those petting zoos, because one really nice thing about petting zoo cards is, you know, if, if you get them early, you want to play them early because they're really cheap ways to get that appeal to really get your, your money engine going. 
I think it'll be. I think this will be a dead draw. Sometimes is kind of what I'm getting at. I think sometimes this will be amazing, and other times you're just gonna toss this the next time a copy break. No, happens. I disagree with you. I mean, yeah, I think that's the case with so many cards in our. Uh, I suppose but what that's I true. Think, yeah, I think what makes this really interesting is that to your point, John, petting zoos are really valuable early, right? Like you mm-hmm. want to play them early. There's less value unless that's the only type of enclosure you can fit in late game. Like it's, it's very rare that I'm going to go play petting zoos late game. Like I've done it, but like, it's so rare. I think what this does, particularly by holding it into that six reputation is this makes it possible to do a petting zoo strategy mid game to do a petting zoo strategy mm, late game. Like, totally because it, it jump starts that. Right. And so then suddenly yeah. you have one petting zoo in your hand that normally you would get rid of, right? You draw those petting zoos mid game. You're like, ugh, like it's too late for me. Like I'm not going to do that. Right. That's a good point. But you have this and one petting zoo in your hand and then it lets you dig for another one. Now suddenly cards that were useless are now suddenly something you definitely want to get down. I, I think that's really, really interesting how they position this card. There's some wacky stuff about this card. The fact that it is a, a three cost action but it requires six reputation. Like in the totally. in the base game, I think all the ones that cost three, except for the sponsorship for animals, have no requirements. Like they tend to have fewer requirements the less they cost, and the more they cost, they tend to have more requirements, roughly. So this, this one's kind of inverts that and turns it on its head. Um, the other interesting thing is that in general, I think having a sponsorship action be like costing three really benefits um flipping the sponsors card which is i think in mm. some communities considered oh. to be one of the weaker flips and so you can weave because it, it allows you to play multiple right yeah. and so there's right. there's an additional bonus to to doing that um and then the other wacky thing about this card is you could play this card and if there is no petting zoo animal in the discard pile it just fails so oh. there's suddenly like i'm now having to pay attention if the track filters it or if i discarded a petting zoo animal over the course of the game and then like the question of is the is the discard pile like open information or not? i think generally it's considered to not be but i'm I, i'm honestly not even sure because i've never thought about it before yeah that's really interesting but you know and it kind of goes to what we're talking about like i feel like when i i see this card i see like a little bit of a catch up mechanism in this card where I'm like me, you know, if you're stuck or you can't really get something quite together, like this could be a great way to like kickstart some appeal or get something. But I also can see in this it played with the other cards in this expansion with so many wave actions happening with, as we talked about less control over that card row when, you know, petting zoo animals are, are you speaking of wanting control over the card row. That's a great opportunity to find a petting zoo. animal. I can spent lots of games being like how am i going to get that right and so i can see like with so many cards getting pulled out of that card row this also means that if you do go into petting zoo animals you you're going to have a better chance of you know getting one back and and being able to kind of salvage that strategy so yeah so really interesting. interesting to your point anastasia also about this being a mid-game card i totally agree with that because of the requirements that are there but like if your opening hand has one petting zoo animal and a horse whisperer do you wait to play petting zoo until later in the game to like maximize the points for your petting zoo animals because you've got this extra icon in play? I like I have no idea. Oh, I don't know. That, that's well, that's like, I mean, maybe I think, but I also think there's more I've now seen already. There's like some new ways to get more reputation. So I think that also makes it really interesting. It's like reputation may be a little bit more fluid with expansion than maybe it was before but yeah i I don't oh mind blown (laughs) we're only like six cards in but like i know i know (laughs) i thought this was going to be a relatively short episode but i was now we're we're aping our own podcast no but it's fun it's fun um (laughs) all right we've got another sponsorship card here okay so we are looking at a sponsorship card called publications which because it's publications requires that you have a little bit of science. It itself, of course, gives you science tags. It's a four cost sponsorship. It's got an icon at the top that makes no sense to me. So yes, I'll go read there's the description. a lot going on there. <laughs> <laughs> it says when making a donation, so donation specifically when you flipped your association card, pay $1 less oh for gosh. each research icon in your zoo. That is so, <laughs> so weird, so specific. And yeah. then immediately, oh, this is fun. You can make a donation immediately when you play this card. 
It, wow. And I assume that's whether you flipped the, the association, association or card or not. Yeah, I think so. You could snipe an er- It also comes with, well, I guess you have to have one already, uh, a science icon. And then it comes with the science icon. So by definition, you have at least two science icons. And that's a minus two discount. So that means you could, I mean, as it shows literally in that icon, you could grab the first donation for free. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah, basically you could play one appeal for four. Yeah, that's. Oh, I love that. All you need is a I university to get this played. Like, this is not hard to get played early. No. And then every donation from that point on, that could definitely add up. And that has the, the, the double benefit. Um, well, benefit slash uh, two-sided sword, I guess, uh, where the one side helps you out cheaper, you pay less money, and the sooner you do donations, the more expensive it is for your opponents to donate. So it's like, it's a double benefit, right? 100%. Encourages early association flip. It does. Which is something I wouldn't normally do, per se, early, if you can get this out. it incur- It's. I like that it's a level four, which makes it a little bit easier to play. I like that it has research icons, because... As you guys, I'm sure know, like sometimes it can just be so frustrating to not get the research icons you need. And one of the great ways to get that is from sponsors that just come with some research icons. It also makes some of those other sponsors that need a bunch of research icons easier to play. This is just uh, it's a great card. Also, it's associated with association. So you could, for example, associate into the university that gives two science symbols and then immediately donate with that discount. The added discount. Yeah. This is an interesting. It definitely seems like it's much better earlier. You can kind of craft your game plan around these discounts. The mm-hmm. early conservation point is better. You probably aren't going to play this card very often late, but it's mm-hmm. at least passable because it's like, eh, convert some extra cash into a conservation point. It's not generally what I want to be doing with my actions later in the game, but it it is passable and if i'm if i have a flip sponsors card and i'm playing multiple sponsorships it might be worth just kind of like throwing in with the package mm-hmm. 100% especially to get that research icon and when you think about as we've talked a lot about how important it is to get that for those first two conservation points in the game in any game that you're playing for the first because, unlock yeah yeah it gives you that first card flip this getting having an easy way to get one conservation point is great because i feel like you can get one it's always trying to get two and being able to do that without associating for a conservation project i think is totally you know really yeah yeah you could you oftentimes find like that one animal that gets one conservation uh yeah (laughs) and then you're just one exactly and like a humphead ras yes exactly (laughs) (laughs) and the fact like that actually goes back to the other conservation project that we saw the fact that it only needs two primates Again, like kind of an easy thing to get that doesn't that doesn't strictly require you to have taken previous association actions That's to get true. a partnership. It's like it, that I think is going to jumpstart. We talked a lot about what this game needs to kind of jumpstart it to get it kind of moving along. Stuff like this and stuff like that uh, conservation projects are, are going to do that. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I'm just realizing now that the conservation card and the sponsorship cards don't have those wave icons on them. So it seems like the wave icons might only be on the animals. Yeah, mm. I, I noticed mm. that a bit ago. I, I forgot to mention it. I think maybe it's a marine animal, like specifically that marine icon. Yeah. Maybe the animals yeah. that have that marine icon. That makes sense because nothing that we've seen in the last few cards has been marine life specific. It's just been... Not in the slightest. You know, These are some cool expansion books. stuff. These publications yeah. <laughs> do not do not take them into the ocean. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, the next card is a new type. Well, it's it's a new type for this episode, and it's uh, an uh, end game scoring card, a uh, bonus card, whatever they're called. So at the beginning of the game, you get two of these randomly, and then when somebody hits ten conservation, everybody has to choose. So this one is called Designed Zoo, and it says at the end of the game, if you this is the one you keep, you get conservation for different shaped buildings in your zoo uh you get one two three or four conservation if you have four six seven or eight different shaped buildings the icon is bonkers for the the shape buildings just like (laughs) piles of shapes so i guess you got like the aviary is a specific shape the reptiles a specific shape then you have the size five four three two one i guess the one and the kiosk and the pavilion are all the same shape but then also there's all the sponsorships with wacky shapes. Yeah, the sponsorships. I was about to say that's got to be wow. like one of the main things. 
That's like, hyena really... enclosure, heck yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, because sometimes you like don't want to take those or sometimes you take those and they just fill up your zoo and not always so in good fast. ways. But yeah. if you had this, this is so unimportant. But the fact that the icon for this, I don't know if all of this is final art, but if it is, the fact that they found like an image of a design zoo that matches so closely to the icon, I just, I really love that. <laughs> so unimportant. <laughs> yeah, I mean, thinking about but, it, like in the base tray, there's size, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, aviary yeah. reptile, seven shapes in that yeah. base tray already. And seven gets you three conservation. So in order to get the full eight, you would need to find a special one from a sponsor. But there's a ton of those. So what well, did you include the petting zoo? Because I, I did it. That does give you. The I eight. did not. Yep. You're right. That yep. gets it to eight right out of the gate. Um, and I can yeah. see a world where you slap a petting zoo down with no petting zoo animals just to get that last conservation point. If you had design zoo, I'm not trying to say 100%. it's an easy one to accomplish, but I think it's doable in in a way that is less uh, luck defined. Like I. I love this game. Ark Nova is amazing, but one of my least favorite parts truly is these cards, the, these end game bonus cards and how some of them are so easy to complete, like for conservation almost every time and others are just desperately hard. And that, that frustrates icons. me. Water yeah, icons. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, exactly. Uh, and yeah, if you, if you start your game with the water icon one and the, the, the mountain icon one, you're like, okay, well, I'm probably not going to get that many points from, yeah, I just from don't these. Even, I just, yeah. And, yeah. And I just like seeing this because those, the problem with those is that it, it, it's dependent on the cards that you draw out of that big deck. And this one isn't, like we just said, you could technically get up to the eight slot um, every single game if you build towards it and it doesn't matter what cards you draw. Anyway, I, I think that's cool. I like seeing that. Yeah, I agree. And I like the fact that it you can, as Nick said, approach it from different ways. If you get a bunch of sponsors, you can also do it that way. Like it's mm -hmm. not they're not sort of like strictly dictated towards a build every single type of building path here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The last thing I'll note about it that's a little interesting is that the um the jump so a lot of the jumps I think I've noticed are like either they're very gradual, like linear, right? Like one, two, three, four, or three, four, five, six, or something like that. Um where like small animals goes like, I don't know, four, seven, 10, 13 or so, you know, so they have like a kind of defined pattern. And this one says for four of them, you get one point and then six give you two points, seven give you three points, eight give you four points. So there's, there's definitely a notable gap between they're like, nope, you got, you got to get really special here if you want to get some points. Yeah. 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 yeah definitely didn't make it easy because I First agree with you, easy, John. Then you got to dig. Yeah. Because the likelihood is that you are going to play all this, but if you are playing a small animal game, large animal game, you don't flip build. I mean, that there, it's definitely kind of pushing you to get a little creative here because you do like, I mean, how often do you play the large aviary and the reptile, the reptile house, house? Pretty rare. You know, in the same game. And yeah. when you think about it, a lot of those maps, you know, don't allow you to do. Yeah, I mean, you luck. have to get just kind of creative. That. I could see yeah. getting this one and be like, "Oh, cool, this will be easy." Then getting to the end of the game and being like, "Oh, I'm screwed." <laughs> like, yeah, I don't like have no, room. I can't for fit all, all this stuff types. in here. No. Exactly. <laughs> but what's nice yeah. is you'll get to the point where you're discarding a bonus card, and you'll be like, "This isn't happening." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that was nine cards, but we're talking about twelve, and the last three are are more different. Um, it's a it's a new idea in the expansion where. So in the base game, everybody has the same five action cards. We have the, the cards, sponsors, association, animals, and then build, right? And they're all identical, but where they are is different. But a new concept in the expansion is asymmetric action cards. And it's my understanding that uh, when you play with these at the beginning of the game, there's a quick little draft. And I believe um, everybody is going to get two asymmetric ones so the other three will be the standard ones and we have three of these to talk about and again we have not looked at them yet so anastasia go for it so let's see what we've got going on here okay so build one building with a maximum size of x standard pay two per space also standard and available kiosk pavilion aquariums standard exclosures and petting zoo okay so basically the same thing that's available plus aquariums which is probably on the new standard builds as well right and then you may pay three to build one additional kiosk that's, that's the, the asymmetry yeah and there's a kiosk Ooh. shiny kiosk icon on it as well so that's interesting okay i'm going to read the upgraded real quick so same thing build one or more different buildings just like in the base game plus now you can build the large bird aviary or the reptile house and then in, with your 
improved build special unique ability, you pay two to build one additional chaos instead of the three. So that's really interesting because Nick and I have a bit of a debate over the value of upgrading builds. That's true. And this would kind of make it so that you don't need to upgrade build quite as quickly. In <laughs> my Nick opinion. is nodding over here. <laughs> <laughs> this card this... seems good. <laughs> <laughs> Explain. We know when Nick will be drafting. Well, so I don't I don't like having to default flip build in a lot of games. And so I've played plenty of times where you don't need to do that. But it does hurt to not be able to like throw down those kiosks. Kiosks are the kind of like nice additional building at the beginning of the game and since you get this like perk right at the beginning of the game the the kiosks are basically going to pay themselves back and it also lets you cover more spaces on your map for kind of those like explosive rewards or bonuses or whatever Mm -hmm. uh this seems pretty spicy and if you're playing the ice cream pavilion map i can see this just being like a pretty nutters combo Uh uh-huh i completely agree and you know because the thing is even if you flip build, you don't always have enough money to want to put that many buildings down. And so I think playing this and having the opportunity, you could play this on two, you know, like level two, like, and just be like, cool. I put down a two enclosure and I got to build a kiosk. Like, mm, you could double I kiosk like that a too. lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's essentially has a plus one power, right? It's just a specialized plus one power. Yeah, exactly. I was about to say to Anastasia's point there, you could even argue that the unflipped version of this card is better at certain levels than the flipped version of this card for other players or the flipped totally version agree. of like build for other players, right? Because it is totally that plus agree. one value, which is cool. Yeah. Totally agree. Super cool. I look forward to Nick beating me with this card unflipped. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we've got uh, two more upgrade actions. So Nick, why don't you take this one? All right, sponsors. Oh, I really want sponsors to be good flip cards, so I'm excited to see what this is. So it's got the base sponsors, play sponsor card with maximum level X, break X to gain X. Um, and then it says, additionally, you may trade one X marker for $5 or vice versa when you play this card. Huh. Whoa. The upgraded version is the is like upgrading a sponsor's card per normal but the trade thing says additionally you may trade one x marker for five dollars or vice versa or pay for pay either for a reputation so i guess pay an x for reputation or pay five dollars for a reputation yeah that's interesting i mean how many games have you ended with like a hundred dollars in your pocket that you just can't spend it enough like near the late game this, yeah yeah this, it's, this it's would be nice just another avenue to just dump a bunch more is it just one time it's one time right i assume it's once yeah it says one x marker it's okay, i think it's pretty clear that it's one time <laughs> it has this yeah it's got that dotted line it says additionally so you get to do the either or and then this so you could actually get money from the break card and then immediately spend it to get x tokens yeah or reputation it's interesting to me because i think one of the values of upgrading animals which i actually think is one of the weaker flips is because every time you play animals, you get that reputation and that allows you slide. to move yeah. up the reputation track faster. And we were talking about that petting zoo sponsor and how hard it would be to get up the reputation track. You know, that that, that, that would inherently make it a mid-game card. But if you are able to get this, flip this early, you know, I do think flipping sponsors early is kind of ideal for if you're going to flip sponsors, you know, just really get the most use out of it that you can. And being able to move up that reputation track with this, I think that is really, really interesting. Mm-hmm. Very, very interesting way to to kind of control that track and move along it and could pair really nicely with that um, Horse Whisperer. Yeah. Compared to the build card we just looked at, I, I'm i not as, as excited for this card as the build card. Like, I feel like that, that build card can change the beginning of my game texture a little bit more. And in, in most board games, changing the beginning of your game is more important than changing later in your game. But that being said, I think in the mid game, this card starts to to come online and is probably always useful you know like you, you either going to have spare x's you need you need money or spare money you need x's and then you know as you were saying the, the ability to get additional reputation is just it's it's always nice it gives you a lot of options mm-hmm. well i also love the way that this changes that dynamic of 
oh, your sponsor's in the five slot. You're going to trigger the break. You're going to break for X and you're going to gain double the money or whatever. I think that even non-upgraded, it's really interesting to me that this is another way that you have an ability to play a, for example, five level sponsor and make five money. Because when you think about it, right? Like if you haven't upgraded sponsors yet and you you have your sponsors in the five in the early game, you really are kind of choosing, do, you, do I want to break for five? Do I want to take money? Do I need money? Do I want to play a sponsor? And this basically allows you to do both, right? If you have an X token, you can play a sponsor and you can get the five money, but then you don't trigger the break. And that also really changes the dynamic of the game when you think about it. Cause you're not, you know, you know, it's not like, okay, I'm out of money. I have to do this. It's, there's a little tempo change in here. And I think that's, that's really interesting. Agreed. Yeah. All, All right, right. Last one. Yes. Oh my gosh. What is it? The final card. It's association. So <laughs> it says, uh, the normal stuff perform one association task with a maximum value of X for the regular side. And then it says, instead of supporting a conservation project, <laughs> you may hire <laughs> one new association worker at the five strength spot and you place that worker onto the five strength spot. Wait, Interesting. What? So it essentially adds a new five strength option. Like normally the five strength option is con con conservation. But for this one, if you have a five strength association action, you could just hire a worker from your board and I think you put it onto the conservation spot and you then have it for the rest of the game. So you don't have access to it until the next coffee break happens, but it's just a way to hire your people early. You're going to hire a lot of your people, right? I mean, or I guess it's it requires you to do it as a, instead of a conservation project. Okay, so it does come with a really real cost. I think we lost Anastasia. Oh, I think we did. Yeah, you lost her in my mind. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you just blue screened her. What? I genuinely thought your screen had frozen. You you, didn't, you weren't moving a muscle. <laughs> like <in mind. laughs> I deleted her. <laughs> you did not. So anyway. I like, <laughs> I'm just trying to like wrap my head around this. Like, what? Yeah, keep going. I'll come back. I'm going to plug... Come back online shortly. If we, if we <laughs> upgrade it, uh, it says, um, so in addition, you can make a donation like normal. Uh, and then it says you may place additional workers to reduce the required strength by two each. It's it's almost like every worker can be treated as two Xs. Yeah. It, it comes with a little bit more of a cost than that because I think it clogs up the space. But Right. But, but you could like do a conservation action from super low, like say you have three workers, you could you could do a con conservation action from the one slot, right? <laughs> Just and you put three workers down, you won't be able to do it again until a coffee break happens. But that would be minus two, minus two. If you had all four of your conservation workers and you had five X's, <laughs> 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 you could you could <laughs> you could I take can't. the action at five. I can't. Dump a bunch of your X's and take a conservation action and a university action and... <laughs> I can't, like, I can't, like, my brain <laughs> is, like, melting. Action. And the thing it's is, melting. you probably are going to have a bunch of people because you can hire them. Like, early oh game, God. especially when you're really having a hard time getting the conservations uh together to do a conservation action like sure there's the partnership zoos which are good and the universities that are good but i could totally see i mean l let's say you draft this one and your association just happens to be in your five slot at the very beginning of the game like do you just rip it for a new worker immediately on your first turn maybe i think that's really good <laughs> i think this okay, card like, like, wait. Let me make sure, like, I Anastasia understand. Anastasia's still playing catch up here. She's <laughs> like, I, I have not accepted I this card. I it's can't. not a part like, of my universe yet. I, I, like, I thought I was a smart person. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, like, an hour of Arc Nova, an hour of 12 Arc Nova cards later, and I can't even. Okay, so wait, all right. The, the way you guys are reading this is basically you leave him at the five slot, Right, and then you get him back. But then, is that is he then also blocking your ability to do another conservation action? Yeah. So you would have two on there now. Yeah. Yeah, you're so, stalling yourself out for future flexibility with with having multiple workers. Wow. But you're probably hiring long before anybody else, and you're probably getting all your workers out long before anybody else, and you're really going to be motivated 
to flip this association card. Right, but then once you flip it, you don't get to do that. Anymore. Oh, that's you're like right. You right? no longer like, can do the hiring. But that you makes no sense, can do right? Because once yeah, you hire just a couple people, you don't want that benefit to be dead. So then you flip it over and then cash in on the benefit of having scores of workers running around. Yeah, <laughs> scores. <laughs> <laughs> I think more than any of the other cards we've seen. This really depends on what your play table is playing like and actually almost almost demands the other people at your table to like respect what's going on with what you're doing with this. So what do I mean by that is that suppose if you, if you choose, let's say, before the first break to hire a new worker, you're going to be behind on flipping cards, right? Because you're not going to get your two partner zoos you're not going to get your two universities mm -hmm. as fast as other players are getting those things so you're going to be behind on card flips which you need to be aware of it's a very real cost that you're paying up but you're going to be the first person that has a second association worker um unless huge. you know other huge. people have just kind of a, a, a really nut straw or whatever right and it's it is huge right so but like what happens suppose that i go into the second break and the players at the table are like oh anastasia's got two employees because she hired someone let's rush the second break so that right. she doesn't get to use that employee right however it's probably a little bit harder because you know there's a really good chance that association has already kind of like filtered back to the top so you'll get to take the action immediately and then you'll you'll probably have a chance in the second break so the like this i guess what i'm trying to say is that i think this card particularly in the early game has a a, a very demanding tempo which can be very powerful but also i could see a situation where i like do this i hire someone at the beginning and then like the second break is really fast and i like completely shot my game plan in the foot with it um, so i think mm -hmm. the upside of this card is very high but i think there can be times when this card falls on its face and that seems terrifying to me <laughs> yeah my gosh you're essentially sacrificing early game tempo for a really strong mid game with the association Which is, action. I mean, I, we've talked about this. I mean, I say this all the time, right? Like Arc Nova is a game that I think allows that. So I think that that's really cool and really interesting. And, you know, you know, for everyone who thinks the game is too long or whatever, and we obviously we went into that in depth in the last episode, but like the fact that this game allows you to do that, allows you time to do that, I think is really interesting. I'm just, I'm so fascinated by how uniquely different this makes arc nova like how yeah. how these are going to change the game like that to me is just like i mean that's part of the reason you know you saw my brain like fritzing as i was just like wow like i really feel like i understand the ins and outs of this game i feel like i understand the way it moves and that doesn't mean i'm amazing at it or, or by any means but it just means that like i really feel like i can kind of just see the pathways and fall into a game and and just kind of like explore the way the cards interact in new ways and it's just you know that that's that's already been awesome and we've talked about how many times i've played this game and yet my god like how different that this is i already thought the deck made it so different the expansion cards that we've seen here today like any single one of these would be completely game changing let be alone exciting every time animals, i draw one of these sponsors i mean yeah and to have this like I, I still am sitting here like genuinely being like, is this too much? Like, do I want to like, <laughs> like, 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 like I, I'm not usually, I actually really don't like um, expansions that come in modules. Cause I just kind of prefer an expansion experience to be the whole thing. And, and maybe that's partly because my interaction with expansions doesn't tend to lend itself to like, I'm going to play the expansion five times and explore each module. I'm like, which one is best? Just tell me. Right. So I, and I, we, we don't know for sure how this is supposed to play out, but there is a part of me that's genuinely like, oh, I could see myself just loving a game of Arc Nova without drafting new action cards, just with those animals and the yeah. sponsors and the new things. Like I'm so intrigued by that. And that I think for, People who like expansions that just add variety and a new, you know, a new animal type. Like, I think that's really interesting. But if you want to feel like your game is going to like fundamentally change, my goodness, like putting these, changing the action cards, e even just taking the fact that you're going to not take just one, you're going to take two, you're going to take mm -hmm. two of these every game. We don't even, we haven't even seen the other ones. Yeah. And there apparently there's multiple of versions of them. Three. Oh my God. Like 20 what? different ones, yeah. What? 
<laughs> that to me feels like an expansion even in of itself and and i don't even know does this expansion come with more maps like it's got to come with more maps I too don't right i think it does actually oh okay um it's okay. my understanding that it it won't actually i have a got list it right okay here. uh so the, the expansion I, I guess i should have opened with this that it's got new cards in the deck i'm not sure how many um but there's special enclosures unique buildings there's 20 alternate action cards uh so i'm assuming four of nice. each type right uh um, there's that new university that we talked four. about yeah new uh final scoring cards and then new bonus tiles as well so yeah that it seems like it's it's very card based it, card and um some cardboard tokens but i don't think there's any new maps well then that's a real credit to to the designer and the team behind this because the fact that they have found a way to make that variety into the cards and into the actions and not just go with what I would have assumed would be the simplest expansion, which would just be like 10 new maps. Yay. Have fun. Like yeah. that's, that's really freaking cool. Yeah. This has been fun. I, I was honestly, I, I knew that I would have fun doing this because y'all are my really good friends and we have fun when we, when we record, but I was like, man, I hope that none of these are duds or lots of like, it's like <laughs> I hope that some of them are really good. And then we managed to like talk. It's like our longest episode ever. And I did not see that coming. <laughs> All right, so lightning round. Out of these 12, Nick, what's your favorite? Humphead Rass. Humphead ah, Rass. No, you can't say that. That was mine. <laughs> that can still be yours. You can have the same favorite. It just, it just lets you play the game in a, in a different way, and I think that's really cool. I just, I'm excited at the idea of being able to play with a strategy that is not how do I get my second association worker out as quickly as possible. Yeah, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Uh, so, Anastasia, this is yours too? Yeah, I totally agree. My my runner up to that actually, uh, interestingly enough, and and I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not even including the new action cards because again, I'm <laughs> a brain still breaking. Um, but uh, it was actually gonna be the horse whisperer. Um, after this one, uh, after the humphead ras, uh, which I completely agree with Nick. There's just something about this that I find so interesting because uh, because I've kind of been finding myself enjoying playing petting zoo animals recently, and just. I don't know. I'm 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 intrigued. I, I find this one interesting, mm -hmm. um, you know, a, a, as a as a way to kind of uh, it just make make petting zoo animals into something new, taking something from the base game and just this little tweak. I think this could be a really fun card. Yeah. And I think my gut check one is the uh, primate management plan, which doesn't seem mm -hmm. super uh, vibrant at first. But it's more just that I hope that there's more of this kind of card because I love yeah. the idea yeah. of conservation projects that are just a little bit easier to get out earlier in the game and that have a wide variety of cool buttons to press in addition to the conservation. You know, two conservation is the key breakpoint. Your first two conservation lets you flip a card or hire that first worker. So I could totally see this being my first conservation. I mean, you do need two primates, and there are not that many primates, but I'm kind of hoping slash assuming there's going to be some other cards that are similar to this. Um, and this style of card is, I think, my favorite, although... The hump head rest does look pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I want to say, like, from a mechanics perspective, that coral reef mechanic, I just, I am so intrigued by that. Just, like, yeah. on the whole, you know, yeah. and we saw a lot of We talked about that so animals, long ago. But, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. But so, and, you know, and that was so early in this in this long podcast, but that, that marine ability, those marine cards were all really intriguing in part because of their new abilities and because of that coral reef and so um just in general i think that's going to be really cool yeah well thanks everybody for coming on this uh fun journey with us there's i believe going to be other exclusive reveals from some other content channels i don't know the specifics of that at all but but i hope that people enjoyed exploring these cards with us and uh, i'm certainly looking forward to to learning about so many more uh there's i think going to be a lot more information coming soon this is probably my number one expansion that I'm looking forward to this year. And uh, it's not saying a lot considering I'm not crazy about expansions, but this this really <laughs> does seem exciting. So yeah, that's going to bring us uh, to the end of this. Uh, if you have any thoughts, uh, please leave comments. Uh, what's your favorite of these 12 cards that we talked about or just a favorite new mechanic um, or just what do you like about Arc Nova? We just really like to get comments and you can find a link to the uh, YouTube version of this one in the description to leave comments there. And yeah, we'll catch you next time. Probably not about Arc Nova. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>